Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. Today we are faceless and joined by another faceless man. It's Arabad. How's it going, dude? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me on again. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you get to have a day off with the, uh, the video. Mm. <laughs> Join me in faceless <laughs> land. Exactly. I, this is, I'm in my natural uh, place now. It's just, I'm here. Just naked, covered in peanut butter. This is what I'm always like, but I've got to dress it up for videos. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> very comfortable. <laughs> and, and now you know why I don't have a video camera. Uh, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you crunchy or smooth? No, never mind, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah, we're here. It's, uh, it's a podcast time again. Just chatting about the game. And uh yeah, I guess the state of the game and some of the current hot topics like, you know, the new gear presets and swapping, etc. We both got our first mythicals. We're going to see some. In fact, let me throw throw them in and let's, let's see them in action here in the background as well. Uh, but, you know, let's oh, just... you got yourself two mythicals. I did. I knew you got one. I didn't realize you got two. I got two. Yes, I did. I did. So I got uh, I got Androck, um, but the first one I got was actually Lazarius. Uh, he's very juicy and it's a little unfortunate I don't have any uh, blessings for either of them I've got I think a one star for Lazarius which is kind of actually not bad lightning cage which protects his stone skin and then he can if he survives in stone skin right he can swap over and nuke them which is pretty cool or he can revive somebody with his passive so lightning cage actually kind of sick on him even at one star but you do miss the stats from more stars <laughs> um, and the stats really are wild yeah they are they are <laughs> well, the stats you get on a mythical blessing it's just it's madness really yeah uh, one thing i was thinking when i was trying to build him up actually his stats for me aren't that insane uh because he doesn't have the blessing right so i'm actually missing compared to a legendary nuker they do have the stats from um you know, from the uh, faction guardians which is actually quite significant but he doesn't which is kind of a bummer, actually. So without the blessing, he's not that insane in terms of his stats. It's just more the abilities and the, the form swapping. Um, yeah, you'll see here his damage for me at the moment isn't too nuts. But uh, yeah, you got Androck. I've got Androck as well. Have you? Let's let's talk about that first. Let's talk about the mythicals. Uh, how's have you found your Androck? Good, bad? What's he like? I found him a little bit disappointing in tag team, but extremely strong in Hydra. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, using him has really kind of been a linchpin in me revamping my, my Nightmare team. I was going to do the Nightmare swaps anyway, but having that Androck with the, with the passive, it really makes kind of outrunning the boss so much easier and means you can run your champions a little bit slower and uh, maybe not have as many uh as much coverage shall we say so i'm running mm -hmm. grazur as the only provoker and i'm not running him crazy fast and i don't even have a speed lead <laughs> so even with all of that because of androk i'm able to basically three to one the boss quite comfortably and keep that provoke up at all times so it does mean that you you can pare back some of the mechanics that you would need to bring and focus more on damage yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to scroll up in our conversation. Do you have a picture handy? I'll stick it up of your actual team, so people can see the team. Um, We've got one there, but it's not. Yes, the... I should do. I can. Just give me two seconds. I'll share it with you. Yeah, cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. I will actually let me throw my Androck in for a very tough fight here. <laughs> I've got him in in this team. One thing I have found about him is that. The build for this general use or for Hydra is, is very different from what you want in Arena. Like in Arena, you know, often you'd be looking for the stone skin and that's obviously not... Wow, that madman or whoever that is hit pretty hard. Uh, not useful for... madman. Yeah, for... Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I completely agree that... I, so you'd want different builds in terms of gear. And now mm. with the presets, you, you could kind of set that up quite easily. But the bigger issue is... What do you do about blessings and masteries? There's yeah. no easy way to have two loadouts at the moment. And no one wants to pay 300 gems to swap a blessing. Yeah, very or 150 true. 150 gems to swap masteries. And 
I kind of, I admit, I'd never really looked too much into the whole mythical thing before I got one. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of assumed that each form would have its own set of masteries, not oh. that the masteries would be shared by both forms. So I was a little bit surprised that that isn't the case. Because, you know, some of these champions have forms that are kind of relatively similar, and maybe you do have good synergies between the two forms. But quite a few of them have very different um, mechanics in each forms that don't lend themselves to having the same build at all. Yeah, very true. I mean, look, Androk, he's a good example, actually, where looking at him for Arena, sadly, he's dead right now. <laughs> he's on the <laughs> ground. But um, yeah, for Arena, you'd really want him to have really high accuracy, right, for, the, for his alternate form. But, you know, if you're doing him in Hydra, I imagine that you probably uh, don't even use the alternate form at all, do you? Well, exactly. Um, and, and even irrespective of, say, when you're running him Hydra versus tag team, mm. form one, you have zero debuffs, so you need zero accuracy. Yeah, yeah. And form two is all about debuffs, so you want good accuracy. And it's like, well, clearly these two forms require completely different masteries. <laughs> Yes, yeah, 100%. Basically. So there isn't really a, a natural synergy uh, between the two. Mm -hmm. I notice you have the same situation I do where you can't quite make that nine-piece protection. So I know, I've got eight pieces eight piece. and nine same pieces. Oh, it's so much better because he puts out so many buffs. It's so much more damage, which is really his, arguably his biggest power spike. But yeah, I put him in the protection anyway. But I'm going to probably with the gear presets, we'll talk about those in a bit. Um, I'm probably going to, you know, tr throw him into an arena build, focus build, and try that out as well. And yeah, maybe even just bite the silver cost and flip him around a little bit. And I'll think about it uh, for a showcase and see where I'm really happy. Uh, I, I, I did bring up your team as well. I don't know if, if you can see that pop up because I think I'm just showing the game with you. But uh, I saw on your team, you have him one star, but you haven't even put a blessing on him yet. You are biding your time. You don't need the, the 10k HP or whatever it is that you get from... <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Mythical. This was my uh, the team I ran last week. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time I'd run it. And I'm currently, this morning, I've been optimizing. So I've been going through each champion and planning a regear. I then mm -hmm. used my one-hour token and then actually equipped all the regears and then quickly fixed all the champions I'd broken <laughs> just in yeah. that space of that one hour. So it was a bit of a manic one hour to try and get it all to line up. Did some of it, you know, a bit of prep work beforehand and found one funny thing. So I'd, I'd lined up all six champions with their builds. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I'd lined up five. Androk I was going to do during because um, I wanted to use some of the same sets that I was using on the other five. Yes. And I didn't want to run them all, do the equip and optimizer, and then run Antroc all at one time, because I actually had done it over a couple of days when I actually had like a few minutes. So it, it wasn't going to work out very cleanly. So I thought I'll just do Antroc after I've equipped the other five. Anyway, suffice to say, I found I'd use the same gloves on two champions, <laughs> which oh, is one of the no. issues you have when you're doing optimization without actually equipping the gear. Yeah. <laughs> it sometimes can happen. I thought I'd been careful not to. <laughs> oh, that, that feels bad. That feels bad. Yeah, I mean, it's something we're going to touch on. It's definitely these, these gear presets. Oh, Androk, he didn't strip the buff. <laughs> One thing I love about this champion, by the way, he's massive in form two. Look at the size of him. He's a beast. <laughs> He, um, he is a beast, and uh, <laughs> the reality is he'll spend most of his time as a sheep. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, there is that, there is that, yeah. <laughs> Which is a different kind of beast altogether. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, but, oh man, these, these, so you said you've used just the one so far, is it, of your, the pre tokens yeah, that we got? Yeah, I've used one so far, obviously we've only got mm. a few days left, they yeah. gave us six days, you what, what, four days left, and Curse City resets tomorrow, Yeah, uh, so... Well, I mean, well, what? It takes three days to get to Soul Cross anyway. So yeah. we're barely going to have much opportunity to use those one hours during Soul Cross this time. But we should get some new ones, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah so yeah, I, yeah. what I'm probably going to do with these three ones is so I've rebuilt or optimized my Nightmare Hydra team. I'm then going to look at maybe optimizing my Brutal team and then do another one hour on that. And then maybe I'll use the last one hour one to see if I can finesse some of the arena builds again or something. 
mm. and yeah, just that... sort of line it up. I do actually have one nice little tidbit um, for everyone watching with those one hour ones. You can actually extend it a bit by using the, uh, whilst you've got it open, just stripping gear off champions if you've got enough space in your artifact Wait, uh, what's storage. You... Oh, as in oh, like just yeah, just ungear champions. So it's yeah, all just un so oh, okay. like it, when when you're in the last five minutes, you're like, oh, I haven't managed to quite do all the regears I wanted to do. Right, <laughs> just right. Just go wild, test stripping <laughs> gear off champions, and be like, I can just cleanly it. rebuild them, <laughs> and it won't cost me anything. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do. I think a whole video. I, I was actually thinking of doing that later today because I still have. A lot of Curse City to do. Uh, once again, I manage to do this every time. I believe if you use your keys every day, you've got enough to clear normal and hard. I've somehow managed to skip apparently multiple days without noticing. I don't know how I've managed. Yeah, to. I mean, you you have enough to clear both yeah. with a week to spare. I've messed it up. So, <laughs> so you've really messed yeah. it up. <laughs> I've, this is, you know what? This is the second month in a row, or maybe the third I've done it. And coming into this month, I was like, okay, I'm not going to mess this up. I don't know how I missed it. Not going to mess it up again. And I've done it again. I've done it again. So, uh, yeah, but I, I am going to be going in with the free regear and really smashing through a few of these stages that I've not beaten. Uh, I'm going to do a whole video on that. Probably be out tomorrow. Let's not buy the skin. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the gear preset, I'm pretty hyped, honestly, about the gear preset. So I've set up a few. So, for instance, I've got... Uh, you know, here we go. Super fast with high accuracy stun set. Great. That's also tanky. I've got a stun set that does decent damage. You know, I've got... Uh, these are still being finessed and whatnot, and I am actually must talk to the guys at, at hellhades.com and see if we might do like an article or a guide on how to min-max this with the optimizer to just make your best... Uh, what's the most efficient... Kind of just, you know, breaking it down for dummies, right? Just simplest way to, to use the optimizer to find your best builds. Um, you know, and I kind of need yeah, that guide myself. Absolutely. I'm not the best at it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I've, I've set up a few bills. So like, yeah, I think going into almost any tough wave in, in Curse City, I'm like, all right, cool. Now I've got my high accuracy stun and I've got someone super fast if needs be. I've got someone with a big old bolster set to protect and then some different type of nukers I've built out as well. And yeah, with the the one hour, <laughs> it's it's an absolute panic. Man. The one hour free time is like, okay, go swap all the gear over. I'm also gonna have a notepad, right, where I actually keep track of who I've stripped this gear off of because it's coming off a lot of you know pretty pretty good character, and some of it's quite mixed as well. Like yeah, the speed is all on Seafy, but the rest of it's yeah, you know, kind of mixed around some characters I use all the time. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm yeah. going to approach it quite different to what you've done. Oh, really? Uh, so the okay. way I've generally been doing Soul Cross is I, I try not to strip. I, def I I make a hard rule. I never strip from my tag team arena yeah. or my Hydra champions. So those are all fully locked down. I don't touch them. Um, it's kind of the rest of the champions who, who get who get used and abused on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, I, I try to do as few regears as, as possible. The one I'd say I probably move around the most is the bolster set because I only have really two bolster sets. So yes. they're, they're always getting dragged around. But I think what I'm going to do with those global presets is select some of those, not my best, best gear, because those I'll keep locked down on those those key champions. But my next best gear, the ones that I would be happy to just rotate around different champions to clear Soul Cross, I'll probably do the presets on those. Uh, and I want to make it in a way that I'm not dragging it from multiple champions. So it's kind of like one set yeah. that can just get moved around uniformly. And then, you know, if you finish the stage and you still got a few minutes left you can just strip it from whichever champion is on currently and then you know you can put it on the next one i yeah. think the issue i have with the one hour thing is some of those soul cross stages even take if you have the gear <laughs> put on mm -hmm, takes mm -hmm. more than an hour <laughs> to clear yeah. and, then, and then what if you want to get it all back onto your original champions it's going to cost you a lot of silver or you have to use another token yeah whereas if i'm going to use say my <laughs> b tier gear i don't care if i leave it there until i need to do the next set of soul cross stages because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. on champions i use every day 
Yeah, hundred percent. No, I, I hate this one hour thing so much. Oh my like I just feel it's it's just a layer of stress. It's as soon as you click the thing, it's like it is the countdown. Like, I think it should be three hours. I think oh, one yeah. hour just adds this tension yeah. that you don't need. I, I think there is a two or maybe three hour version in the code. I don't know if that's what we're gonna get when the Curse City resets. Or if that's going to be something that is either sold directly or in bundles in the uh, real money shop, shall we say, which is uh, I'm not a fan of. Like, I, I personally am a fan of just free regearing all the time. That's obviously not going to happen. They, they, they're pushing it sort of like as more of an event. And these are sort of a stopgap to tide you over a bit. So like they're nice, but man, it's just. Why does it have to be so stressful? Just even make it be one day token. <laughs> like, let me chill. <laughs> give, me, give me some breathing room here, guys. What's happening? Um, yeah, I think they, they could have gone from a couple of different sort of angles. So say they'd be giving us, what, a, a three-day event every month mm -hmm. during Sintranos. What would have been a kind of optimum if you could actually, from Soulcross, you get one three-day token and you choose when you want to do it? So say they give no, yeah. they don't do any worldwide uh, free regearing anymore. They give you the tokens and you can choose when to use it. So yeah. You could get, say, one three-day one, a couple of one-day ones, and then a couple of, like, three-hour ones. And then that's, that's probably enough to not need to ever have, like, uh, permanent free regearing. And it just gives agency to the players to choose when they want to do it. Because I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when they've picked that three days of Sintranos uh, kind of regearing, it's you, it's either in the middle of the week or I'm away that weekend, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I know I need to do a load of Soul Cross, and it's like ah, oh, it all becomes really stressful trying to fit it into real life on their schedule, and it's like, can't I just do it when it suits me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I am a fan of of the the scheduled one uh, my issue for me is is more that the schedule is not super intuitive whereas i mean they've been messing around with the shard events a lot as well so they're not super intuitive but at least there was that sense of like oh when is 2x ancients coming up okay i know when it's coming up and i can plan um and it's, it's always you know on the weekend okay great uh it's it's always it's not quite as clear when the free regearing is coming which is a bit of a problem but I, I like yeah, it's the not idea. telegraphed at all, which I think is mm. the other reason why I'd prefer just to have agency of it because yeah, you, you can just you you know your own schedule, which weekend you're not that busy that month, and you can use it when it when it suits you. My Android, and you know, if they wanted to, they could make it have a, uh, it, you know, you have to you can only use one per month or something. They could put a cooldown on it. They mm -hmm. could do whatever they wanted, really. <laughs> yeah, so it could be could. the equivalent of the. <laughs> of the, the 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 global event but just you get to choose when it starts mm -hmm. one thing uh, i will say for the event one thing i like is it's up for everybody like if it's something that is locked within the cursed city there's going to be a decent chunk of players that can't actually participate right. and get that so that's something that's nice about it being global and i, I do like the event feel as well like especially for uh, i've got the luxury of being a Know, the full-time content creator so i can make the time no problem <laughs> so that that uh, gives me a bit of a a privilege there for sure but i do like that you know it's kind of like oh, okay that's let's say there's these three days for regearing i can do a big regearing video and i know that a lot of my viewers are in the same spot and like they'll enjoy being like oh well okay great i want to do my regearing well i'll do mine while i'm watching nub and i'll get some ideas or see some mistakes that he makes and then I'll fix them you know yada yada that can be quite fun um but yeah, there is downsides, like you said, where you could easily, you know, just be, well, I'm, I'm busy those days. I guess I've missed this month. Uh, that's pretty rough for sure. Ooh, this might be a loss. Yeah, I, I, th I think, like you say, that the benefits of it being a, a, a global event where everyone kind of feels like they're doing it together is mm. probably larger than the downsides of, well, this month I was busy. So I probably would change my opinion uh, on that and say, yeah, I think it is actually better to have it as a as a global event just to to keep the community kind of united. But then, like you say, probably the best thing uh, on top of that would be just telegraph it. <laughs> just yeah. let us know what when it's going to be. You <laughs> yeah. know, a couple of weeks beforehand, say this is the date it's going to be next month, and they'll be like, okay, cool. 
I I know, you know, that that's when it's going to come and I can plan around it. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like we end up, you know, we know it's not the beginning anymore. They've said it's not going to be the beginning of Centrados. Mm-hmm. So about one week into reset, between one week in and three weeks in, we're going to be <laughs> every day, we're going to be like, is it today? Is it today? <laughs> yeah, he <yeah, he's> was <laughs> waiting as well. Yeah, it's a bummer. Like that was, you know, there was problems with it being right at the start, obviously, because, you know, you didn't know what you needed to regear. But again, at least that was a clear telegraph. You're like, oh, as soon as it swaps over, I see the big countdown, you know, in the menu screen. And I know like, oh, yeah, great. You know, in one day, in one hour, there's going to be free regearing. OK, I can prep for that. Uh, whereas, yeah, now it's like, <laughs> yeah, when when is it coming? What's happening, guys? We're going to reach platinum here today. This is amazing. Androk is doing surprisingly well in his protection build. I think the Ancora Narcis combo were uh, kind of carrying this I, I, pretty I'll hard. be honest. I think it's the Ancora Narcis that are doing particularly well in their builds. <laughs> yeah. I th- yeah. <laughs> Half the time he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, like, he, does, he has one reaction piece, but he's got a decent chance to just die at the start. Uh, he throws on some buffs and, you know, then he dies. Um, but... <laughs> Oh man, oh, he's yeah. done his bit. He's done his bit. <laughs> but yeah, was, I mean, it's kind of fun seeing some of these mythicals. Like I said, I'll probably try to do uh, some more showcases uh, of of both of my mythicals. We've, actually, I've got probably when we finish recording. Actually, it's going to go live. Is um, I brought Lazarius and did some live arena videos for the first time in a while. Uh, so that was actually quite fun. And there's a lot more mythicals than the last time I did live arena. That's for sure. They're much oh, more. Oh, it's common. wild! Mm-hmm, it, it's mm-hmm. wild. How many? <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. it, it's kind of crazy obviously mythicals i th- think the biggest thing they've done is reduce the value of lockout yes unless you don't have any mythicals <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> in which case you're just like you're fighting mythicals and you're fighting lockout and you don't have either and you're like oh this is this is hard <laughs> well this is fun look at this guy he's got two he's got two mesomels look at that that's dedication. Let's put He's going to be blocking in. all of the revive. Exactly. No, no, not a single revive is going to happen. Well, maybe it will. Let's find out. Um, let's talk about the other major, major change that has happened in the last patch. So we got obviously all the, the gear presets and the tokens, but we've also got um, some honestly massive nerfs uh, to many of the, the dungeon bosses, like the Iron Twins, Sand Devil, and Shogun. Uh, I think Sand Devil in particular was brought from something like, I think it's genuinely something like 24,000 defense to 3,000 defense. <laughs> you know, it's something absolutely crazy. But uh, how have you found the nerfs to the dungeon so far? Do you think that they've been good? I haven't actually uh, heard your thoughts on this so far, so I'm, I'm curious how you feel about them. I mean, the the reason you haven't heard my thoughts on them is I haven't actually done any of the dungeons. Ah, well, there you go. They changed it. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> or paid any attention to what the actual stat changes are. I know they've reduced the stats. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, until I actually try and change my own teams, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to notice, I guess. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> but, I, I mean, the thing with, say, Sand Devil, I don't have a Siffy. Yes. So, I the chances of me having a consistent team that's better to run than Godseeker Ninja with food. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, there probably is one, and it is definitely a dungeon I'd like to farm more quickly. So I might take a look at that at some point and, and see whether I can get something going more quickly. Uh, well, that, that is something or... that has changed. I can tell you right now, I've seen some videos where because the stats are so much lower, um, I've seen like a Godseeker with a Newt, for example, which is not super accessible, but much more. I'm sure Marius would work the same. Um, and that they're able to solo it pretty quickly now. Because before, the Newt would really struggle to do much damage because the boss would heal so much and um, just be too tanky. I think now it actually works because he's so much squishier. Uh, and yeah, there's probably yeah, other things... Yeah, it's something I definitely too. should look at. I mean, I did, I'll be honest, I did try and, when we first got Newt, I did try and put him in a Godseeker Newt team. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, he, he does no damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's that's different now, which is is a big change. Um, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot more budget teams for, I think, nearly all the the dungeons. They've been nerfed a lot. I, I have seen a couple of people uh, from from my clan and some of the communities I, I'm looking at 
uh, being a bit disappointed, saying that like they've made them too easy, right? Because they nerfed them so hard, and that it, it yeah, it's made the the dungeons unexciting. Um, so I don't know, like, what do you feel it's, about? It's a tricky balance, isn't it? You, you yeah. don't want it ever to be trivial, yeah, because then it's pointless. Um, because you don't, you're not motivated to improve your teams at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I... why why would you? Or, or you know, or be creative. Because you can just steamroll everything. So it kind of it's fun, I guess, when you're coming through being able to beat them for the first time. But if you if they've nerfed them that heavily, you at the power level that you will now reach them, you would be you know, you've already got other challenges that you should be focusing on. It's kind of like you always need new challenges as you power up. And there's so many good challenges for that level of of power that if they've made them too easy now then it's just it kind of just becomes i don't know i'm trying to think do you know what i'm trying to say like it's, it's hard to find the right words to articulate it yeah but it's like it all blends into one mm -hmm, like if mm -hmm. they're the same difficulty as all the other hard dungeons and the same difficulty as a lot of like say hard doom tower and some of I don't know, faction wars or something. Everything just merges into one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the concern that I'm seeing as well, is that, I mean, you put in the good, uh, you, you phrase it well, and you said the concern would be of it being trivial. Um, and that's, I think that's the feedback I've seen from some players is saying, well, they are really trivial now. Now, it's hard to judge because, you know, like, again, I'm talking about my clan. They're uh, not exactly, you know, casual free-to-play players, to put it bluntly. Um, so <laughs> it, it might be, you know, that, yeah, sure, it's trivial for, you know, a Kraken, but is that a problem? Like, it stuff probably should be trivial. Most stuff should probably be trivial for Krakens, because, like, how could a normal person farm it then? Uh, so I'm not, I'm not fully sure, actually, myself, um, yeah, where, where exactly they're at. Like, uh, I've been a proponent, certainly, that the dungeons shouldn't be crazy hard, um, which I think they were like, I think Sand Devil in particular was was crazy, crazy difficult. Like you needed such specific champions. And most people really were just doing, you know, you had to do Godseeker. Like you just could not do the dungeon, quote unquote, properly. It was just impossible. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. But I think what, what were the two worst mechanics for non Godseeker teams uh, and non and non kind of cheese teams is probably the fact that you couldn't survive the main nuke. Mm -hmm. And there aren't that many good revive on death yeah that approaches are accessible. That are mm -hmm. available and that's not really auto friendly typically so I, I think that was one issue with the design of the boss it's not something that you can farm if it's something you need to manual like that's just not a good yeah a good exactly way of yeah no it has to be auto friendly yeah yeah it's, you can yeah. revive on the, death the, the other issue hit, was but... the the hit counter the hit counter was quite low and things like war master and giant slayer counted Yes, they, they, so they fixed the hit counter, that's now much higher, uh, which I think is, it's made Blizzard solos for people running Blizzard. So I saw there's been a bunch of videos and stuff about it. I've not paid too much attention, uh, but I think Blizzard solo relying on Brimstone, like it desynced the Brimstone and stuff like that because of the bigger hit counter. <laughs> but I think that it's actually fine because you can just give him Giant Slayer now and he kills the boss just fine anyway because the boss is so nerfed. Um, <laughs> so yeah there's been a bunch of stuff going on oh wow this guy he's shoes and a seafy on auto that's fun i like it i like it seafy's got no don't know why she did that i've never used a shoes end um <laughs> but uh yeah 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 it's uh it's an interesting one L let us know in the comments how you guys feel about these bosses uh, uh for me i i do it makes me even wonder, they could even do hard mode versions of these bosses at some point, right? Like, we've got hard mode dungeons, it could happen <laughs> if they are that easy now, uh, according to people. Um, Bring us hard mode Minotaur. That's what we ooh, all want. <laughs> yes, that is what we want. That I, I, yeah. <laughs> you, you run it once, you have full masteries. <laughs> it, it's so funny because I, I think that, I really do think they're sleeping on Minotaur. Oh gosh, this is... This is looking pretty rough. This Taris with one buff is killing my whole team. Um, I I really think they're sleeping on the value of of Minotaur. <laughs> like I, I don't think the devs are fully in tune with that. So hopefully, 
that's something they're going to listen to the community feedback and yeah put in minotaur it's it's such an easy win it's what everyone wants uh so i'd love to see that happen H how do you feel about the general state of the game so obviously you know improvements to minotaur farming would be great is there anything else or like how do you feel just in general about the state of the game i know that like you've you've had burnout before with the game like where are you at with that do you feel the game's in a good direction right now with the power surge like what's your vibes on it yeah as of I, today? I still think the game has structural problems uh that they're not resolving and we're seeing it more and more in terms of they keep adding mechanics that are just completely breaking the game so they obviously we got trunda yeah. completely broken the game <laughs> <laughs> we now have wixwell who's kind of broken the game but a lot less <laughs> than, than trunda or broken more parts of the game <laughs> yeah um they've they had in feeble uh that they nerfed because it was breaking the game and now they've added poison cloud as a buff that can be extended which is once again breaking the game <laughs> so it's like it's like what what are they like i don't know what they're thinking i don't know what they're doing <laughs> like it's as if they I, don't, I do feel like they've lost control of the game somewhat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, there's so many champions, so many buffs, so many debuffs, so much complexity. Mythicals have obviously, again, mixed things up to a, a whole other level. And I don't know, it just feels like they don't know how to, how to keep the game balanced anymore. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, that's definitely a concern for sure. Do you find it or how much fun are you having? I guess is a, an important question. Like right now, is it fun or is it like, nah, this this is too much. It's not fun anymore. Well, I, I'd say I'm 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 enjoying pushing my own Hydra damage mm -hmm. for myself. But Hydra Clash isn't a rewarding structure for me to do that. Because my damage is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. You know, even if I, I'm, I'm trying to get uh, 1 billion on, on uh, Nightmare at the moment. Even if I get that, it, it's irrelevant. Because anyone running the Yannicka uh, team will do like 2, 3, 4 billion. And anyone running Trunda is going to completely decimate it by, yeah. you know, a factor of 10 or 20 if they're properly end game nightmare uh trunda team so it's just kind of like I, i'm doing it for myself because it's it's probably the one kind of last bastion of the game that's still got interest i don't think live arena's that enjoyable uh in its current form mm -hmm. for many reasons which we can go into <laughs> if we want to and and I think they they missed the balance within Curse City, such that Soul Cross is a bit too hard, and the rest of it's a bit too trivial, at least on the on the hard side. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, and and that doesn't work that well either. So Soul Cross is more frustrating. I have clear, full cleared it the last four rotations we've had, mm -hmm. so I'm only ten points away from Carnage. And then you look at Carnage, and you're like, oh, he's just gonna be polymorph machine <laughs> so i'm not even excited about getting him he, he's going to be my second ever mythical and i don't have one who's really an arena focused mythical he should he should be like completely game changing for me to get mm -hmm. but i'm looking at him and going he's going to be a sheep because everyone's running polymorph because they couldn't be bothered to actually fix polymorph yeah. Everyone's running Trunda because they can't be bothered to actually fix Trunda. It's like, why keep it? Like, just you have to do something at some point. If they want the game to last another two, three years, they have to sometimes take the hard decision and try and balance the game a little bit. Here's a, a nice from Restlex and my clan. He's got a kind of beast mode carnage key actually here for Hydra which is uh, pretty impressive, actually, equal to Razzlebark. So he's got potential there. They don't yes. sleep on him yet. <laughs> he has potential he in has... PvE. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll build him. Uh, it does, obviously, will I book him is the, is the bigger question. I'll definitely, you know, run him through Minotaur, get his masteries, and, mm -hmm. and put some gear on him. 
Um, but mythical books are in such scarce supply. Yes. You know, the, the, do I want to invest the books in him in the current form of, of Polymorph with the Polymorph meta? Now, if you didn't have the Polymorph meta, I think it would be a no-brainer. But I also don't have any way of protecting him. I don't have a net crit or anything like that. So there, there is that other angle. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, with, with Narcy's in there, net crit is... <laughs> he's just making Narcy's hit harder offering as well. much protection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I know. But, you know, in Live Arena, not everyone can can run Narcy's. Only one person gets yeah. to pick him. Oh. Uh, um, and in tag team, obviously, typically people will only have one, one, uh, one Narcy's anyway. So you can... Yes. I, I, I could... Like if it wasn't for Polymorph, I'd absolutely build him, and I'd find times so I'd I'd use him. Uh, he might not make every every team. He might not be like first pick, but I I would use him quite a lot. Um, but I don't know. I, I I just feel like if they really want the game to have the legs that it it could do, they need to make some hard decisions, mm-hmm. and that I think is what's kind of making me question about how much longer I'll keep playing. Mm-hmm. Like I, at the moment, I am playing because I still have my own kind of personal objectives that I want to complete. So I wanted to get Carnage. I wanted to finish, you know, all of the Soul Crosses kind of thing. That was that was kind of something that I had my eye on. Uh, and recently, I, I decided I wanted to hit this this one billion on Nightmare <laughs> once it became uh, remotely possible for the champions I have. But I don't want to. I don't want to run cheese teams it doesn't, doesn't yeah. really interest me that much yeah that's understandable i mean, it, there's an interesting debate as well I, I i had some videos about what is a cheese team and what isn't um and people can get kind of offended but like i, I know i know uh like yst he i think he would not run unkillable teams in uh demon lord clan boss and he's like he prefers the challenge of the non-unkillable because he feels like it's it's more fun that way which is totally fair I th- I, I think it's a similar thing and totally fair as well. Oh my god, Armands. We're gonna get solo by Armands. No. No. D- ah, the humanity. Wait, Androck can Another save Another perfect example of something that's completely imbalanced and a little <laughs> bit ruined the game is Armands. Yeah. And you, you ask all the top end arena players, and I would wager that uh the majority of them, probably two thirds, three quarters, maybe even more would be advocating for our man's to be nerfed for the health of the game yeah but... it, it, it's an interesting one isn't it? like i i think there's obviously no question you'd have to be absolutely insane to say that our man's is not overpowered he clearly is i, I think one difference between him and trunda like trunda plus two yumikos is obviously breaks hydra clash that's not very accessible our man's as a fusion at least he was accessible so a lot of people have him now that being said i think he's still clearly overpowered and kind of busted um i think marius has a passive that makes him immune to turn meter so it gives you a little bit of an option but i don't know it, he like yeah i think our man's is really really overtuned just in general uh I, I would be worried that the way they're looking to fix it is like how they fix taris marishka is just uh, you know, we'll we'll wait a while and then we'll release a champion that counters them. We don't actually need to fix anything, um, which isn't isn't ideal. Yeah. I think. I mean, the the issue with that is they've not always been successful. Mm-hmm. So if you think about, they tried many times to release counters to lock out champions. Yeah, and it never it never worked. <laughs> yeah. What was right, there, the her... the only time we actually had a counter to a lockout champion? was mythicals that's the that's how long it took them to actually counter lockout they tried uh some of these champions that would uh, i can't even remember who they were they were that irrelevant but <laughs> they they would they had a passive that if you put uh people's skills on cooldown they had a, a 50 50 chance to not have their skills put on cooldown or something like this it was these kind of silly things and it was so rng that no one no one used them yeah, Glacea Soul Guide. I think she's. I think uh, yeah, it's Glacea. Order. And and they mm-hmm. had a few other times they tried to, in inverted commas, create counters for Warlord Yumiko, and and they never did. They 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 failed completely to ever actually develop a counter until Mythicals. And Mythicals took what four years, five years, 
mm-hmm. five years actually before they came into the game, right? Yep. So yeah, a long time. <laughs> and, and Warlord during that time they actually buffed Warlord. They decided it wasn't strong enough. If you remember, probably actually before you started. Yeah, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> they buffed him really. Yeah, so oh, wow. they did. <laughs> uh, they increased the amount of turn meter he depleted on his lockout. Oh shit! If I remember correctly, and they also changed the sequence of his buffs. He used to be susceptible to torment because he wouldn't put block debuffs up first, and that was like his one weakness was that he didn't put block debuffs up first, so he could get frozen. I see, and not actually uh, buff the team. <laughs> now, like, no, we we don't think he should have any weaknesses, so we'll we'll buff him. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Oh, we're getting Armand's right here in the background. This is a couple of rough fights. Yeah, that's my yeah. Like lock, lockout's in an interesting spot now. All right, with the mythicals, but like you need to have the mythicals to have that interesting interaction. I don't think we can beat these two teams easily. Um, yeah, it's 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 kind of a bummer. Like if if I hadn't bought a bunch of shards, like I still wouldn't have a mythical now. If I was Playing, you know, more efficiently and better, I I could be super close to Carnage, and could possibly have gotten the uh, Elysinia as well and been able to do Mikage. So it's not out of the realms of possibility I'd have a Mythical. It's not easy either. <laughs> so there's probably still. I'm I'm curious actually. I must do a poll for my viewers and see how many of them actually uh, do have the Mythicals. Um, yeah, it's it's the it's the slow counters. It's the slow changes to meta by not nerfing champions and stuff that has definitely has some downsides it's got positives but it's it's got downsides as well yeah i i i vacillate in terms of how i feel about these things you know uh i like to troll people telling them that trenda should be nerfed as much as possible because people get really upset it's kind of funny um oh oh oh, arm, oh, oh god this fight's not looking good oh never mind we're fine no, you win we're, we're good <laughs> we're good narcis pulls it back well, the power of the narcis yeah he's a totally balanced <laughs> champion as well <laughs> like i think it's actually like one thing in terms of the power creep like not only do we have the mythicals but in terms of my top live arena picks right now like i'm looking at armands White Queen Ancora, White King Narcis, and I'm going like two of those are fusions, <laughs> and one of them was was a guaranteed void, um, you know, which is more accessible than other void. It's still very much a whale thing, but it is more accessible. I'm like that's kind of nuts to think about, you know, that they really are pumping the power of these these champions. Uh, yeah, like stuff that was good even a year ago is is really falling off like i would I, I even wukong i use a, a decent amount like so many champions that i would have built up in the first two years of playing i just like well barely touch those anymore it's really the new stuff um and that's been very apparent in the last definitely in the last year or so i think um yeah hmm. absolutely and, and i would say it's the same for me uh very yeah. much so and i think like i, I think some of those are it's fine like i think it's it's kind of healthy for the game that things should change uh i do think they should go back and tweak some of the older champions because you know if you are a new player there's still a you've got just the same odds of pulling an old now redundant champion as you do a new fancy toy that that's the best in class yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i i don't think that's super helpful either mm-hmm. um so they do need to sort of slowly bring up some of those old champions uh, a little at least catch them up a bit uh i do think the new ones are also a little bit too strong but i i think it's natural that the new ones will on average be slightly stronger than the old because that's the nature of the game and keeps people interested and keeps new the meta evolving over time it's those outliers that are, that are problematic so you mentioned taras Mushka; they were outliers for a year like mm-hmm. they completely broke the game <laughs> and made any form of competitive content uninteresting if you didn't have them and to be honest i mean i didn't have them i would think it was probably uninteresting even if you did have them because all <laughs> you're doing is picking the same champions uh and that's that's my main issue actually with live arena i was gonna ask is, yeah that you, you you just end like i myself i pick pretty much a pool of seven or eight champions and i'm picking four of the same champions every time with a flex spot and yep. that's it oh, i'm exactly that, that's the my same. entire thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah because... <laughs> it's like this isn't 
that fun or strategic, there's not enough restriction for it to be fun and strategic. And uh, and our man's has even taken what bit of flexibility there used to be out because everyone will pick our man. <laughs> yeah, either to really have him or to right. deprive you from picking him. <laughs> yeah, and it's just kind of like, what's the point? <laughs> Oh, this! Oh my! It's my first time seeing this guy actually defied against. He he hits hard. I I can see <laughs> that. See. Yeah, that's very <laughs> obvious. And we're dead. <laughs> that was cool. Um, I like it. Uh, he's not even ascended either. That's fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I totally. I lost my train of thought. I got distracted by him. I was kind of follow up with a question. He's distracted and I, by damage. <laughs> yeah, I've totally missed it. Uh, oh, I remember one. It's jumping the topic a bit, but. You were talking about, you know, new champions being good. Let's talk about a new champion that people feel isn't good. What is your feeling on uh, the current fusion, the incarnate? Are you going for it? You know, is it free to play end game player or is this something that you're skipping? So I, I normally routinely go for every single fusion uh, just to future proof and because I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That said, I'm actually on holiday next weekend so from the 15th to the 23rd which is kind of half of the fusion <laughs> so, right and the fusion's <laughs> kind of i would say very mid <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, oh my god for what want of a better word like it doesn't i don't quite understand what they were going for with the fusion mm -hmm. like normally you can look at the fusion champion and be like Okay, maybe it doesn't have a place in the game right now, but if they came up and, and a new boss came with this mechanic, I could see them being really helpful. Or, you know, that they have a certain theme to what the champion is. But this particular champion, this whole interaction with Arbiter whilst being a defense-based champion felt yeah. a bit <laughs> weird. It's very weird, and yeah. It didn't seem that natural. The only thing I could see that's com maybe coming that would this champion might excel in is like ultra-hard faction wars. If they give us like a new tier of faction wars that are extremely difficult yeah. and you're actually reliant on Arbiter reviving people because it's that hard um maybe that's where he comes in but how excited would you be for that if that know. was new content um like is that something that would interest you or is it are we too far in the game now like is hard faction wars just not great how do you feel about that i think it is i, I think that... hard faction wars could be could be pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. if it's done if it's done right and and as with all of these things, it's always a question of of, of execution. Um, I think faction wars itself now feels very trivial. I also think that I don't know about you, but I'm permanently out of five and six star glyphs, particularly oh, yes. six star glyphs. Very much so. They yeah. keep giving us new sets, and we keep trying to like build those new sets uh, and 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 kind of scale up our gear and we have such a limited supply of glyphs that it's becoming more and more, more, more problematic to to stay uh you know stay up to speed so if they did give us new um new difficulties and maybe just up to the the glyph counter uh that that would be a nice reward in itself and maybe it would actually justify some of the more powerful champions we actually have. Because Faction Wars was fun. You know, Lydia was a great reward. Everyone wanted to, to complete it to get Lydia. Uh, so if you had a new mythical champion as the reward for hard Faction War clearing, and, you know, there was something... That would be cool. You yeah. get a, you get, say, maybe, maybe just six-star glyphs and maybe a new set mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as, as well uh, for the hard side of things. I think that would be something fun that people would want to do and you could build new teams for it. Um, you know, they fleshed out all the factions so much over the last few years. That's true, that yes. Most factions are insanely strong and there's nowhere really to... <laughs> 
<laughs> to use it. <laughs> There's yeah, nothing that's kind of faction restricted. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, I I'd be pretty hyped for it. It would be definitely interesting. It's a I hadn't really thought about it in that sense of it would be a great spot to put in like another you know free mythical champion as something for people to aim for. Ah, uh, but I'm good. If they could really they could make it really hard. Like if we think about how tough faction wars is now versus you know oh man like they could really make it a lot harder i i'm not sure where oh, it ends massively up. <laughs> yeah massively they, they they could and it it the nice thing about that i guess is twofold one it would be a direct replacement for something you're already doing mm -hmm. so either you could carry on farming it super easy as you do or if you do have the champions and the interest to build the team you don't have to run the current ones anymore so <laughs> it's not always adding more time to the game you're replacing something that you're currently doing with something new which i think is also kind of important at a certain point they can't only add new content without effectively removing some of the old sometimes yeah yeah we're getting smashed around here. This is very tragic. <laughs> I mean, you're you're really in the Kraken territory. <laughs> yeah, poor 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 old eight piece protection. Uh, Androck is not doing a job anymore. Is he? he's he's no, off. he's 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 reached uh, the Whoa. limit of what he's capable of doing. Uh, it does it does <laughs> seem so. I, we might want to swap him over into uh, Stone Skin to try that more. It's it's been I thought it's been quite fun in the background actually seeing this sort of progression up the arena to fight some really tough stuff um <laughs> nice. um but yeah that's crazy uh, one, one thing you mentioned earlier on i wanted to follow up on and sorry i'm jumping over the place again but we were you were mentioning you know trying to hunt down mythical tomes because they are so rare you know i i think probably the last time we did this neither one of us had a mythical the mythical tomes is like ah it feels like we've got infinite mythical tomes and we're never going to use them well, that's sort of changed now. Um, so you're saying that you have been putting focus into like trying to actually track them down and get get a hold of the mythical tomes. Like, what strategies have you been doing? Um, like, what what would you advise somebody, you know, free to play to mid spend to, in like the late to end game? Uh, like, what what do you think people should be doing? How hard should they be going for these mythical tomes now? Yeah, it's one of those things. I think it's something you need to to manage as a resource. So like you say, for a while, we were slowly collecting them and had no way of spending them. So it didn't really feel particularly worth doing. And then you, you pull one and then suddenly, you know, that um, actually takes most of your mythical tones. <laughs> yeah. It's like 10 or 11. <laughs> and uh, I think I had managed to get 20 or something, but with no mythical. So I had enough to book out two champions. And I pulled one booked him and then i'm like i'm only one epic away from mikagi mikagi rather um, mm -hmm. and if i do get that and then book her and then i get carnage i actually can't book all three so it's like very quick succession you can go from having an abundance to then not having any or not having enough mm -hmm. and what's interesting is how difficult it is to actually get hold of them unlike say legendary tomes where it's always a case of well you know they'll they'll be now they're super regular in the champion training, but they always used to be less frequently in the champion training. But you knew they would come every so often. And you knew as long as you were doing uh, Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, you would pick some up through there as well. So I was never super worried about getting legendary tomes as soon as I had Clan Boss on farm. Before you have Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss on farm, it's, it's a real problem. But uh, uh, once you do, it's then kind of just a case of managing it slowly. But with Mythical Tomes, there's no real guaranteed place to get them. No. Uh, you can get them through Hydra Clash, but we all know what that's like. That's not <laughs> yeah, something not you exactly can rely upon. Control. Exactly. There's there's no reliable way to get them there. Um, so it becomes a case of, I think the way we run summoning events has to be changed in 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 our mindset uh on, on particular we just on, like, got free to by play the way side. wrecked by a level 78 guy with three man defenses <laughs> i need to <laughs> somebody <laughs> tell white queen ancora to revive narcy's not androk what is she doing come on you bring him back with so much <laughs> she's trolling me here leader 
Oh my god! You have the wrong lead. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. So you've now made me lose my trail of thought. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Mythical Uh, tomes. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So with the summoning events, generally those mythical tomes, either one or two, they usually put in on on like a summon rush. They Mm -hmm. don't do it on a champion chase, but on a summon rush, and they're usually quite deep down. So what it ends up becoming more a case of is for the sacreds summoning six or seven on a regular basis to do half of a summon rush is long term going to end up with zero mythical tomes now you might complete more titan events or fusions along the way doing it that way Mm -hmm. but maybe sometimes not doing one of them and finding another way of of completing what you needed to uh because sometimes with these fusions or titan events you can skip one thing or or something if you max out the other you know so sometimes you can you can do some optional things and it, it, it changes every time but really what i'm saying is occasionally you actually need to max out a summon rush <laughs> Basically, occasionally you've got to go, you know what, I'm going to do all 15 here because I want that mythical tome because there's no yeah. other way I'm going to get one. It, it, it does remind <laughs> it's me. about timing it. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of, of you know, near when I started the game, I guess like three or so years ago. And this was before they were really doing the guaranteed champions. And um, yeah, I think at that point, you know, for, for, for someone that was free to play, it was a case where saving up to max out a summon rush was actually really valuable because, you know, that was the way to get the legendary tomes back then and could be really impactful. And and with how things have gone with like points going up and guaranteed champions now and Titan events and all of that, like maxing out summon rush is really not something that you'd even consider much anymore. But as you said, with the mythical tomes, it's sort of history's repeating itself a little bit at the moment where, yeah, I mean, you've, I'm, I'm halfway here it could be worth potentially going further maybe for these mythical tomes and like you said you give up a lot but it might be the only way to get more like i think i've got 10 right now i've got enough for makage when i pull her eventually hopefully but if i got carnage <laughs> couldn't do him if i pull another mythical it's gonna be a long time you know i i, I booked up androk fully anyway even though he's not you know the absolute top tier mythical just as, as did first. i as yeah. soon as i got him i was like might fully well. booked yeah it's like maybe it's not the best decision but you know you sometimes you got to make bad decisions as well <laughs> um I, I think also because like when i got him a first mythical b had an abundance of books and it's only after booking him and then thinking i'm one epic away from mikagi and i'm like a few days away from carnage and then suddenly i was like oh, I don't actually have an abundance of resources. <laughs> so it kind of reframed things. So for instance, when we had that anniversary path just recently, like I, I didn't go for, I can't even remember what it was. It was a skin, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, I didn't bother was, going yeah. for that. And I didn't bother going for the one sacred chart that we get regularly through Clan Boss anyway. Uh, I didn't think that seemed like worthwhile, but I did go for the mythical tome. Uh, I did do that. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh. Because Ooh, how often do we get one? And yeah, like you just true. said, you look at that and it's like 14 sacreds to get a mythical tome. Well, I managed to summon some soul shards during a 2x event that I wanted to do anyway and pick up a mythical tome. That seems like pretty good, uh, pretty good return on resources when you put it like that. Yeah. So that's kind of more what I'm looking for now. I think... I still need legendary tomes because they just keep giving us so many legendaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true as well. All the time. <laughs> Perpetual fusions. And because of the power creep, pretty much every legendary you get these days, you have to book out because they're the new greatest thing and better than all the other legendaries you have. So, <laughs> you know, you just look at what Eastrid, Padraig, uh, Armands, etc., etc. It's like there's been so many this year we've True. acquired narcis and cora between guaranteed fusions and all the rest of it there's so many champions we've acquired this year that have needed to be fully built wixwell again another one yeah that's interesting for (laughs) For me uh, i get books some books for free you know as part of the content creator program so that's something that i don't pay much attention to Uh, you know again it's a luxury 
that obviously most players do have to deal with. You know, I I I can just book any legendaries I want really without too much. You know, I I do have to pick and choose, but it's not the same level of stress that you know a, a typical player has to fight uh, has to face. And it's interesting. Huh? I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. Yeah. One th uh, final thing that I wanted to ask you about as well, which is something that we were um, talking about before, uh, or I was asking you about, I think yesterday, your opinion on it was um, on like Soulstones. You know, now that we've got these 2X Soulstone events coming in pretty frequently, um, I was like, you know, how do you feel about buying Soulstones versus buying the Essence directly? Like what, what, what do you think is the most worthwhile stuff? So... Yeah, do you want to go over that again? Because like I, I was... Yeah, yeah no, ab absolutely. So originally when these things began, I was an advocate for buying the... Uh, just upgrading your champions through the shop because it was the only guaranteed way to get the champions you wanted. We weren't getting that many uh, stones through natural acquisition and the pool rates were terrible and the wish list was terrible. So I was very much of the opinion that you, you're better off just buying Essence uh, than Shards with, uh, with the coins. And they then upgraded the wish list, which frankly for me hasn't worked out. I've <laughs> engaged in many 2Xs and I'm yet to pull a legendary from my wish list since they upgraded the odds of any tier. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> at all <laughs> so like kind right. of uh, something fairly remarkable in that regard <laughs> but um it, it it obviously statistically should work you have three on the wish list an mm -hmm. 8x on each of them so it's roughly the equivalent of like a 25x progressive and you'd think you know after you've summoned a dozen or two dozen legendaries you should get one on your wish list, surely, right? Right, obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, there's no mercy, so <laughs> anything's possible, which is a bit disappointing. But anyway, I, I'm sure I'll eventually pull them. And uh, and we get uh, we have the events that usually have, often there's a crossover. So, for instance, I got the Mythical Tome back. That didn't used to happen. We didn't used to have events uh, that were any good, shall we say, for summoning uh, uh, the the soul stones um and now with the the 2x chance to drop the value of the stone i think is much higher particularly tier two when they do those two x's and you're basically got a one in three chance of pulling either a five or six star uh blessing mm -hmm. is huge because you know what what we've learned since they changed the awakening as well that's another thing they changed from before where they all give so much stats now that the value of five and six star blessings is so big compared to what it was when it was first released so between all of these things put together i just think it's a it's an absolute no-brainer that you should be buying tier two uh soul stones ahead of buying tier one essence I think that one's a complete no-brainer. Yeah. Because getting level three and four through the shop isn't that valuable. It's okay, but it's not like super valuable, not like five or six star. Um, and the four star split soul is so expensive. It's 300 essence. So again, <laughs> yeah. it's like the equivalent of 20 uh, immortal soul stones. And if we're saying you get 20 and you have a one in three chance of getting a five and six star, you should get five or six five or six star souls mm -hmm. for the cost of one legendary four star split soul and you got the same problem i i think with the eternal soul stones where to buy yourself a uh a five and six star split soul mm -hmm. is uh 400 essence Rad which is the equivalent of 20 <laughs> so tier three yeah. eternal soul stones yeah, yeah. Like, so right, just like right now, I could buy three Eternals. I could buy 62. Wait, a 62 out of 400 required to go five and six star. <laughs> it's it's pretty brutal. And like, these are so many points for path events and stuff like that, which can yeah. give guaranteed souls for good champs. Um, so between between all these path events and the two X's and the better wish list, even if it doesn't work for me, it works for other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think between all of these mechanics, 
buying essence makes no sense anymore yeah it's it's fair yeah 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 I, I, it's a good it was really good actually to talk to you about it and and get so sort of that reality check as well where you know i i've had been doing the st the stones right especially because of the the 2x events and because of the path events as well i was kind of going like you know when you're sat there with a few champions like oh, i was kind of going oh man you know cfi's a five star he is at five star. She's at you're, you're you're in your head. You're imagining. Oh, imagine hmm. those at six star. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, but then, of course, when you sit down, you're like, well, to get one of those, this one of them to six star is costing you like twenty eternal soul stones or something nuts like that. You kind of go, okay, right, well, yeah, all right. It is. It is probably not not super worth it. Um, yeah, they could always be power crept as well. Like, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this is the other thing is like, who who do you want to invest all that resources into to getting? Say, you could get one champion. Yeah, I mean, Siffy is special in that she rarely gets power crept. Yeah, but <laughs> she will eventually, <laughs> and, right? Eventually. Generally stays relevant, but she will. She is slowly. Like, I Duchess has actually kind of been power crept quite a bit now. Yeah, I'd say. I. I would say so. Uh, like she, she's still decent, but she used to be like the arena defense champion. That's definitely not the case anymore. Like Narcy's destroys her. Um, yeah, you're much more likely. Like the top end, you're much more likely to see. You now the stuff that we struggle, <laughs> I struggled against here in the video. You know, you're gonna be seeing the mythicals really, like uh, Galathir yeah, and yeah, this sort of stuff. Crixia, Siegfried. Yeah, it's there's not gonna be many duchesses up here anymore. Whereas she would have Absolutely. been considered, a, I think a lot of people would have felt that she was a really, really safe champion to six star and might have saved up for months to do <laughs> She's it. She's the only one I uh, legendary that I've uh, six starred manually, and I did every, I bought every single stage of it. Oof. How do you... I also bought every stage of Seer and every stage of one of my Shamils. Those are basically the the three champions I've bought the way up. Fair. And yeah, I, I I still use my Duchess a lot. But I am using her a lot less than I was even six months ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I forecast that in six months' time, I'll probably be using her even less. And it takes so much time to get someone to six star that it, it just doesn't feel good when, <laughs> when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more than actually six starring the champion or doing the masteries or the books. It's the awakening that's the, the most precious resource. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, oh, hundred uh, percent. One thing we'll we'll jump to it as well. Uh, I was thinking about is, he, he, I think my perception definitely when I, I've been pulling these stones is like, oh my god, the mythicals pop out all the time, right? <laughs> it's like I constantly get them, but then you know, you, number one, you cannot buy the mythicals. So if you are buying essence, it means that you're skipping out on a lot of mythical souls and. It kind of feels like the mythical souls are overflowing. I've got lots of really good ones, but here I am. I now have two it's mythicals. Not for the mythicals you have. <laughs> yeah. So actually, it in hindsight, it is actually kind of valuable to get the you, you might be thinking, like, oh, my mythical souls that I get so many of them. It's not a big deal. I don't need to think about mythical souls. But with more and more mythical champions being added, actually getting the soul for each champion, there's no way to target it, at least right now. So that is actually yeah, something no wish that, list either yeah no no wish list yeah so which would probably not help anyway knowing our luck but <laughs> um it, it is something to consider so like this very much motivates me more you have to pull a lot of souls uh you know to to get the one for the specific mythical that you want um so that's something to, like i would have totally dismissed this like the idea of caring about mythicals from soul stones i would have been like oh, i'm getting so many it's totally fine by the time i get a mythical i'll have a soul for them but maybe not like Mikage. I skipped that Titan event. I do only have a two star for her. Now, obviously, she really wants the the five or six star. They all do. Yeah, which was the one big do. issue with the Titan event. It's how yeah. you went up to four star. Mikage and it was just star. like... They're Crixia. Ooh, juicy. <laughs> gets you uh, two eternal soul stones if you sell it. It does. It does. <laughs> no, don't tempt me. <laughs> no, you shouldn't sell it. No, but if no. you got a second one, oh, <laughs> then yeah. maybe you would. I, I do have a five-star uh, Crixia yeah, to sell. <laughs> uh, I'm saving that one up for now. One star? I, I, that's on. almost You a... don't need the one star and the five star and the six star. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, 
I think the other reason soul stones over essence have become more valuable as well, the last one, is mm-hmm. uh, Centranos itself. So now yes. I want more of my all of my champions to be awakened, you know, because the stats yeah. are so valuable and it helps so much with uh, with Curse City on on Soulcross side that I would rather get twenty good stones or 20 you know bigger stones than than pay to upgrade one champion all the way to six star yeah because i want that breadth now and again maybe in the future it'll change you know once you you you, we've had more and more of these events and the majority of your champions are at four five and six star awakening and then you're like well now it's it's so hard to get an upgrade that maybe we'll go back to the shop at that point Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it could be. <laughs> so it's hard to tell, isn't it? But right yeah, now, I think now. with Soul Cross plus the wish list plus the enhanced rates plus the um, the events that go on alongside, I think it's a no brainer right now. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, final question, then. I've got a few. I've had a few final questions at this point, but um... <laughs> the final, final, the one. final, final one. Maybe <laughs> no promises, apparently. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, epic empowerment as well, and and soul cross. I'm I'm curious how you feel about it because I think from talking to the devs, I, I believe I, it's, I don't think it's fully confirmed, but it does seem pretty likely that they had no plans to do epic empowerment. And when they spoke to some of us content creators at the start of the year, they were like, okay, you know what? You guys seem pretty into it. You know, let's, let's do it. Uh, and it was something that they hadn't actually initially thought of. For me, I feel that now it's live in game. I think it's been absolutely amazing. I, I think it's added a lot of fun and excitement. I'm sure it might be short-lived and it will, eventually stuff will be empowered and that's it. But I found it a really fun addition and it, it's made some of those annoying stages in soul cross you know at least you're like okay well at least i can eventually overpower it with plus four empowerment that will help and all of that but um yeah i don't know how do you feel about it? like i've i've loved epic empowerment but what's your vibes about it now that it's been in game for a bit yeah i mean i would say that it's it's been good i don't think there's a single downside to having it there uh i would say the only negative is that it should have been done a long time ago yeah true Basically, if I had any criticism, is that they waited so long. Uh, a, it's given new interest to to X ancients to even when you're when you're pulling your sacred shards. Now, epics getting dupes actually has some interest, and and for a long time, I'd say I don't know about you, but when you were doing the two X ancient events, you were just summoning them because you needed to for the fusion or whatever yeah and you you were you were half asleep as you were summoning (laughs) them and and if if by some chance you pulled a legendary even then most of the time it was a dupe anyway uh and it's just kind of like there wasn't much excitement to be had um one day we might summon it'll send you and then we'll be really happy but yes aside from that (laughs) i'm now actually really looking for those top tier uh epics that i need for soul cross and it's like there's a whole i'm chasing that second third fourth fifth you know version of that epic and that you know from a free-to-play perspective that could take forever <laughs> so it it means that there's actually excitement in in doing the the mundane summons again uh it's also like you say helps in terms of the power level to be able to overpower the difficult stages so that's positive as Mm. well uh the one issue that it hasn't addressed in soul cross is there are a number of stages that are extremely restricted to one or two champions at most that you really have to have if you want to be able to beat them and moreover is that some of these stages require you to have uh what do you call it um crowd control that's consistent yeah (laughs) and there are either no champions that do consistent crowd control in the selection criteria in which case you're reliant on stun sets for instance or you're running constantly being forced to run negative affinity and that's not fun uh, and, and obviously empowerment doesn't address either of those issues true, true. but i do think that's something they should have been more aware of and that is 
mandatory crowd control on negative affinity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. isn't challenging it's frustrating because you just have to run it so many times until you get that right rng like that's not hard that's annoying <laughs> yeah well it's i think i did the worst stage i did it's the one where it's like spirit affinity so you've got duchess and you've got something else and two more twos and there's one rotation where all you've and got you is force force yeah. affinity all aoe champions <laughs> And it's like exactly okay, great i mean we've got stun sets and provoke that's nice but like if it ever never if it doesn't land we, all we've got is these aoe's like the more twos are just gonna kill somebody we just run it over and over and over and yeah. over again and you have to land the stuns every time and oh god that one was dreadful i think i only did it once i think it came yeah if it comes back it hasn't come time, back yet oh god. i, I it, it was one of the rotations i didn't complete <laughs> and it was that stage was partly why I didn't. Yeah. Uh, because I did not want to run that stage the number of times required oh. to beat it. Uh, and I, I, I wasn't, I didn't, I don't think I cleared all the other stages anyway. So it wasn't like it was the last stage. Yeah. But because of, of that, early... I was like, it, it demotivated me from even trying to complete <laughs> that rotation. Yeah, so... exactly. I, I did beat that one actually. Uh, so it's doable, but my god was it miserable it's just it's just awful <laughs> um yeah I, and and i don't think that should be in the game i don't think they should have no situations where you're you can beat it but you have to run it a hundred times and make yourself miserable like it should be a strategic challenge or it should be that you have a gear gearing challenge so you have to like reach certain thresholds you need this amount of accuracy resistance speed whatever and you know those are what you need to ultimately bring but if they give you no tools basically and make you run negative affinity and then just say well just run it enough times until you get all the perfect rng and then you'll win it like that's not challenging or fun that's just annoying yeah <laughs> it's obtuse <laughs> <laughs> uh, agreed agreed uh, how close final 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 question how close are you to uh, getting marius actually uh i'm so we've been talking about uh great rng uh, uh -huh. and marius is another thing of pure rng so i i didn't go like and really push myself to to get it as soon as i saw the missions i looked at them and i was like there's no way of creating a situation where you could be the first in the game to get it or the first free to play to get it yeah because even if you did everything perfectly someone else is probably going to have slightly better luck on the heavy rng stages and you can't control it so i thought i'll prefer to take it a bit more relaxed not kill myself trying to get it and not worry about being first so i i'm in the third stage of missions I'm on the eternal, uh, not the eternal, the, the immortal essence, the first one, where you need to get 40 immortal essence. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I've done it for seven days, um, Got none. including two times on void. So I bought the keys on void and I did one set of keys every other day. And I've had five. Okay, uh, it's better than none, right? Right. <laughs> the none. I got five on the first day, and Ooh. then I went six days of zero. Uh, <laughs> and I keep seeming to get the tier two essence, which I never normally get. Uh, so I've been <laughs> really lucky in inverted commas with tier two essence. Three days, I've got tier two essence of the last six. But none on those six days did I get tier one essence. So, you know, at this rate, <laughs> I'll have to do it for eight weeks <laughs> just to clear the first one. And then we have an 80 immortal we essence. Do, to look forward to. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, it's all RNG, you know. So it's, it's, there's no way you can control it or do anything to improve the odds for you to get them. So yeah, either you you're buy, lucky or you're not. Buy gems um, and a refill every day. <laughs> but you, I mean, I, I could use the gems and do a, a refill. I don't even need to buy the gems. I have enough. But you still can't. Even doing that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get them. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no mercy on this. There's no pity, rather, on you getting these essence. Um, you know, somebody could get it in a week and do all 40. Mm -hmm. But other mm -hmm. people, it could take, you know months there's yeah. just it's pure rng I, i'm super far behind i need to catch up i'm on the five 
from any dumb way. <laughs> I got stuck way, way back. <laughs> I think on the first one of these where it was like far mythical stuff. And I was like, I can't be arsed. I'll just, it will happen eventually. And it took me a couple of weeks or something to get them. So we'll see. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I'd love to get this done today. I, maybe I could, but then also, I don't know. I'm bothered. <laughs> but listen, Erbad, this has been uh, another big old podcast. Um, yeah, listen, thanks for, for jumping on and joining me. <laughs> uh once it's the way again. we do it isn't it yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's funny like there's there's been so much to talk about so, like you would have thought that you know in the previous hour-long podcast you know we would have exhausted everything to talk about in the game there's they've managed to create a whole new slew of things to talk about uh in i don't know however however long it's been a couple of weeks few weeks since then so who the heck knows then predictions is there's gonna be something crazy will happen and there'll be a ton more to talk about uh, on your channel next time in maybe another few weeks. So, uh, yeah, we shall see. Absolutely. All right. Anything you want well, to say? It's been a pleasure. You... Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cool. Great, guys. I'll link Airbad's channel down below. Make sure to hop over and check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching and or listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.